All right, everyone. Um, I'd like to go ahead and get started since we uh, have a lot to get through um, in the next 30 minutes. Um, but first, I do want to just give you all a little update that um, we raised a grand total of $5,560, um, which is well over what we needed to raise our match of $3,000. So in total, that's $8,760.29. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. That is um, the biggest raise we have ever had at a district summit. Um, so we're very, very thankful. Um, and, uh, you know, again, Kudos to Rachel. She's just a, an absolute, that was a master class in uh, how to make an effective ask. So I really, really appreciate it. Um, all right. So I'm going to share my screen here. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to talk a little bit about messaging for um, 2021 and 2022. Um, I, I hope that you all enjoyed our keynote speaker and not Shankar Osorio yesterday. It sounded like everyone had really great feedback. Um, as you can probably tell at Sister District, we have a huge amount of respect for Anat, and so we very often follow her messaging strategies. Um, but her talk was focused more on um, an overview of different types of messaging strategies and sort of what works in a global sense um, for the Democratic Party or what could work. Um, and uh, I want to take that and sort of distill it down into some key messages that you all can use for your volunteers specifically and sort of how we talk about the organization um, in 2021 and 2022. Um, so that's what we're gonna go over. Um, we also had a really great social media session with Ariana yesterday, um, for those of you who were able to join. And um, she went over some sort of really tactical, practical ways to um, work on social media. Um, and so this session, again, will give you sort of the key messages that go, um, th that you can use on your social and as you're talking to volunteers. Um, I'm also going to cover, actually, I'll show you my little agenda slide here. Um, I'm also going to briefly go over misinformation. Um, I know it's a really hot topic right now. Um, it is not something that is just on the right. Unfortunately, it is also on the left. It's, you know, we're big purveyors of it as well, even though you might not really think of it that way. Um, and the reason that I want to go over that in our talk right now is because um, it's something that I care a lot about. And also, I think it's really important to just sort of be clear about what we um, need to avoid when we're trying to spread our message and what we're trying to, um, you know, the pitfalls that we might um, might run into. Um, just to let you all know, because I know that you're going to be chatting a whole bunch right now, and you know, you can drop questions into the chat. Um, I won't be able to monitor it while I'm talking in real time, but um, I'll try and get to some of your questions um, at the end of my presentation. I am not going to talk about voter persuasion. Um, in other words, you know how to convince people to vote for a specific candidate or how to convert people from Republicans to Democrats or anything like that. Um, we have a lot of that research on our website um, at sisterstrict.com slash research. There's also a lot more of that out there. I'm not going to be talking about voter scripts or anything like that. The reason is because we already have a lot of that um, out there in the world and um, you know we only have 30 minutes together today. So um, we're just going to keep um, keep it tight um, and focus on our key messages and misinformation. Okay, so let's dive right in. Why states? Um, glad you asked. <laughs> so first, I want to just go over the facts and add a little bit of definition um, to the landscape that we're trying to communicate in. Um, you know, it's true. 2020 was not what we hoped for at the state level. Um, that's true. We'll you know, go over that later or what that means in terms of messaging later. Obviously, you know, the pandemic affected down ballot candidates, gerrymandering and enthusiasm and awareness gap, all of that. Um, Gabby talked about some of it in her analysis yesterday, um, and we have a lot more on our blog. Um, maybe one of my uh, um, staff members can drop some of the blog links in the <laughs> chat for you all. Um, we're not going to go over the why, just the level set that like that is a fact that's something that we're dealing with for the next couple of years um fair enough um another fact democrats have a federal trifecta that's great trump is out of office that's also great um it's also not 2010 you know um there's gonna there's a lot of talk about redistricting and you know what the next cycle means for us in over the next 10 years um it is not the same as it was you know we have made progress since then um and of course a very big one the GOP is not dead. <laughs> We're still dealing with them, even though we have a federal trifecta. 
So what do what does all of these um, what do these facts mean for in terms of how we craft our messaging um, for state ledge volunteering? Um, well, it's true. 2020 wasn't what we hoped for. Um, excuse me. Um, you know, all that really means is that we still have more work to do. What we started what we started four years ago um, is not done. Um, that's all it means. You know in terms of messaging, maybe it means some other things, um, you know, uh, in other senses, but, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, it just means that we're not done. We still have more to work to do. Um, yeah, more on that later. <laughs> um, Democrats have a federal trifecta. What does that mean? Um, well, um, it means that the GOP has minimal federal power. That's great. Um, it does mean that that's great for federal legislation, but it also means that Republicans will be coming out hard in the midterms um, and you know, going really hard in the states, which has been their strategy for a long time and it will be their only recourse over the next few years. Trump is out of office. Um, that is amazing for the country. It is amazing for our own psyches. Um, it's less emotional drain day to day and all of that, um, but it can also, leave potential volunteers and current volunteers feeling like there's less urgency. I can assure you, by the way, there is still urgency. This is still a very important, uh, state legislatures are still very important, um, but it can feel like there's less urgency because we don't have all this craziness coming down from uh, the federal, from, you know, from the White House every single day. It's not 2010. Um, we have made a lot of progress. Some of you, probably a lot of you already know about the 2010 redistricting cycle. You know, um, the uh, it's when Project Red Map, the GOP's Project Red Map really came to fruition. Um, I'm not gonna go into more detail about that here. You can Google it. You can see a lot, um, get a lot more information on it. But um, just suffice it to say that we've made a lot of gains um, back at the state level uh, since 2010 uh, because of our work, because many other organizations work. Um, and so this upcoming redistricting cycle will not be the same. Um, and lastly, you know, the um, reports of the GOP's death have been greatly exaggerated. Uh, we don't know, only time will tell where we are in the life cycle of the GOP's, you know, of the Republican Party in general. Um, but we do know for sure that they are going to be working every bit as hard as we have been working for the last four years to claw power back. And they already know that state legislatures matter a lot. So they're going to be working hard at the state level. Okay. So with that being said, um, let's dive into some of the biggest um, top line messages um, that we're gonna be working with for the next couple of years. So number one, um, this is the first one I wanna share with you um, that you can use with people who are feeling burnt out, um, especially folks, which is a lot of us on this call who were motivated by Trump, um, who were activated by Trump, um, you know, respond really strongly to, um, to urgency. So the, the first, uh, the first key message is that movements take time. The GOP is on a um, on year 39 of a 40 year strategy or more. Um, they uh, and you know we're on year four, maybe a little bit more than that, um, of trying to combat that strategy. Um, you can think about you know pretty much any large social movement, um, you know women's rights, um, LGBTQ rights, um, obviously, you know, slavery and, and racial equity still dealing with today. These things take a really long time. Um, some of the big milestones I like to mention are, you know, we, we look we think about LGBTQ rights as uh, starting with the Stonewall riots in 1969. Marriage equality didn't pass, didn't become a federal right until 2015. I mean, that was many, many decades later. Um, you know, obviously slavery was baked into our founding and we're still working towards racial equity today. Um, so a little thumbnail I like to share with people is to ask yourself, what would Stacey do? What would have happened if Stacey Abrams, after four years of work said, this is too hard. I don't think I'm gonna do it anymore. Um, she, you know, we would not be where we are today. It took her a really long time. And frankly, it took faith and hope and confidence that this work would eventually pay off. So what would Stacey do? <laughs> um, all right, second major message is that we cannot let down our guard. Um, the GOP will be going even harder this year. Um, they have, or the, over the next few years, they have limited power at the federal level. Obviously they will be working aggressively to take back the house in 2022. 
They will continue to go hard at the state level because they know it works. It has worked for them in the past and they're gonna continue investing um, in that tactic. They're already uh, mounting attacks against voting rights, reproductive rights, et cetera. Um, we talked about that a little bit yesterday and we'll have a, um, some, some blog post roundups of, um, of some of the legislation, the sort of nefarious le legislation that the Republicans are passing um, currently. So, uh, you know, sort of infamously Democrats lost hundreds of state ledge seats under Obama. Um, you know, we can't let that happen again. All right. Moving on to our third big message um, is that we have a full stack or full life cycle approach. Um, that's a little joke for our Silicon Valley folks, um, full stack. It's sort of it's a, a software engineering term. But uh, basically what it means is that we are addressing needs at every phase of the state legislative life cycle. Um, we have seen that the candidate pipeline needs help. We've seen that deep community-based organizing, um, like what they've been doing down in Texas and Georgia and also Virginia, which we'll, we'll hear for, from some of the really amazing organizers that have been working very long-term in Virginia um, in our next session. That's why we are rolling out new, new programs this year, including Future Winners, which you've heard a little bit about, and State Bridges, which you've heard a little bit about. Um, and that's just to continue to invest a little bit more outside um, just the pure electoral campaign work that we've been doing for the last four years, just sort of expanding that vision and making sure that we're hitting um, every phase of the, uh, of the state ledge life cycle. Um, and, you know, this is, again, I, I, I know I'm referencing Stacey Abrams a lot, that's because she's, you know, in the news and, and rightfully so. Um, and so you may come across a lot of volunteers who are um, really inspired by her work um, and have already uh, ha already have some familiarity with some of the principles that she was working with. Um, so this is another thing that would resonate with with those kind of folks. All right, number four, state power achieves a lot. Um, this is and has been and will always be one of our cornerstone messages as an organization. Um, many of you are already very well versed in the reasons that state legislatures matter so much. Um, States that we have flipped blue have been able to make incredible progress, including, um, you know, in Virginia, they expanded healthcare over 400,000 people. Uh, just this week, they've been working on repealing the death penalty. They're currently in session, um, re repealing the death penalty, legalizing cannabis, um, lots of other amazing legislation. Um, Colorado, which we flipped blue in 2018, um, has passed a bunch of sweeping environmental regulation. Um, police accountability measures and so forth. Same thing in Washington State, um, Nevada. Uh, you know, once we get Democrats in office, they're able to achieve some really amazing stuff. Um, and of course, as all of you know or hopefully know, um, work at state legislatures have a huge impact in every in people's daily lives. Um, so. I wanted to keep this slide here because you know I know that many of you already know why state legislatures matter so much. Just to emphasize that this will continue to always be a very important message for um, for uh, all of our volunteers. All right, last one. I know that we are uh, blitzing through this, but I only have 15 minutes left. <laughs> okay, so number five. 2022, here we come. So um, of course we do have a general election in Virginia this year. I don't want to discount that at all. Um, we've got, we're going to have some amazing candidates this year and they need our help and our support. And Virginia is an amazing state. Um, I'm very excited for this to be our third year supporting candidates in Virginia. However, uh, we are already planning for 2022. Um, the, uh, you know, as I said before, the Republicans without a doubt are already working towards it. They will come out swinging in the midterms. Um, and it now is the time to um, start working towards that already. Um, we will be raising money for 2022 states starting this year. Um, of course, you know, it, all of the training and recruiting of new volunteers that we do this year um, will matter su such that we have uh, more effective and more engaged volunteers to hit the ground running in 2022. Um, and the money that we raise for the state bridges programs for future winners, et cetera, um, will able, will allow us to 
um, seed the other organizations that will be doing great work next year as well. Um, so, um, and I have listed out our target states. You can find more on our um, uh, our whole strategy at sisterdistrict.com slash strategy. And we will be releasing a real deep dive into the nitty gritty of exactly what we'll be doing um, over the next couple of years electorally um, soon. Um, so, um, all right, we've got uh, 15 more minutes. I'm going to leave it there just in terms of key messaging for now, just so that we can quickly go over some misinformation information. Um, and I'm going to uh, we'll just do that for a few minutes and then I will answer as many of your questions as I can. Um, and just to plug throughout the year, we um, try to offer you a lot of tailored messaging guidance <clears throat> to whatever uh, is the topic currently at hand. So if it's either something big in the news, if we have new programs, new candidates, etc. Um, we have our monthly talking points memo, which can be found on the resource library, along with a lot of other messaging guidance and communications guidance on the resource library. Um, we also have the social squad, um, which Ariana is running, and she will email you specific posts of specific language and um, images and all kinds of things for you to just post on social media. Um, and that will also be in the um, in our HQL updates and so forth. You can always reach out to us for more help. Always happy to hear from you and to help. Okay, I'm just going to check my notifications really quick um, and continue. All right, so misinformation. This part's gonna, it is completely different, but I will explain to you why it's not um, actually as, as as different as you might think. So I do wanna go over this because um, as I said, it's I think it's a really important um, part of understanding how to craft your own messages um, and what we need to all do collectively in order to keep our digital community safe and healthy. Um, and you know, understanding how messages resonate and how they move throughout um, digital communities can help you be a more sophisticated consumer and communicator yourself um, because, yeah, I'll leave it there. Um, so there's a lot of things that we could be talking about in terms of misinformation and disinformation. Um, disinformation is uh, in th fake news that is intentionally spread. So that would be like, you know, what Trump did, does. Um, misinformation is not intentional, um, but that it can be equally per pernicious. Um, it is obviously not factually correct. Um, that's the cornerstone. Um, it is not intentional often, but it is everywhere. So just to explain a little bit about our philosophy, um, we believe that misinformation and brand integrity and trust in the organization and digital security all go hand in hand. Um, my team, my communications team at Sister District, Ariana and Sarah and I work very closely with our head of technology, Kat. Um, Kat Robinson uh, for exactly this reason, because we believe that we are setting the tone um, and that trust in our brand has serious implications for our staff, for our volunteers and how you all interact with each other. Um, and it also reflects on our candidates and um, you know whether or not they're proud to be a part of, of Sister District, which I think you've seen um, over the last couple of days that they are very proud of it. And, and, I'm, and I'm really happy to say that. So I encourage you to go onto social media and sort of compare our voice and our brand and you know the feel that you get from our digital presence versus some of the other people in this space, the other brands in this space, and just think about what each brand kind of evokes, like what you what the impression is that you get when you're interacting with those brands. Um, so yes, we do not um, post anything that doesn't move the organization forward. All right, so what are the biggest pitfalls? Um, well, the thing is that social media platforms exist on ad revenue. That is how they fund themselves. Ad revenue needs clicks, clicks need users, and users respond to emotion. Um, so sort of, in other words, the algorithm, quote unquote, um, rewards content that produces strong emotions in us. Um, and of course, the things that elicit the strongest emotions are the exactly the type of content that we're not um, probably going to interrogate very closely because we do feel so strongly about it. Um, and 
to be really clear, like I am not saying that you should not approach this work with a lot of emotion um, or the world filled with a lot of emotion. I certainly have it myself. You know, I, it's what keeps me going. I feel rage and, and sorrow and pride and all those things very, very strongly every day. My team knows, you know, I tear up at anything. Um, but what I'm saying is that when you do feel those really strong emotions, you know, just pause for a second and think like, why did that meme make me so angry? <laughs> um, you know, it's worth just taking a minute and interrogating before you choose to repost it. Okay, so I'm gonna go through a couple examples here. Um, you can drop in the chat whether or not you've seen it um, and if you can identify the red flags quickly. Um, and all of these things, I, I imagine that you will have seen them because they came from uh, my personal media, social media feeds. Um, these were memes that were very widely shared over the last year. So, um, oh, and this is the other thing is that it comes from misinformation is very quickly spread by us, you know, by people that who are smart, who are thoughtful, who we trust, um, you know, people that we respect, um, which makes it even more dangerous. Okay. Here's our first one. So who else saw this meme? It is a, um, it was shared back in April, 2020. Um, that was back when we didn't know anything about mask efficacy. Um, in fact, DC where I live was still recommending that people don't even need, didn't even need to wear masks if you were healthy. Um, but uh, what do you guys think? Um, is wrong with this picture. I will go ahead and identify some of them. Um, there's it. There's no source. Um, it looks kind of weird. Like why are the percentages, um, the percent symbols before the numbers? It's um, you know not a very polished look. Like what's wrong with this? Um, there's no credible source. It doesn't specify the type of mask. Anything like that. Um, and it is, uh, in fact, I will send you the Snopes article in the chat. Um, it is totally debunked, a random meme that someone made and it went totally viral. Um, obviously that has major implications for people's safety. Um, okay, here's another one that I saw running rampant. Um, I even saw this shared by some very smart people with graduate degrees in public health, believe it or not. Um, even a friend of mine at Johns Hopkins, I'm sorry to say. Um, now, this one I think is really important because you know I, I saw this and I said, hang on, we've been listening to Dr. Fauci for the last year every single day. He just doesn't sound like this. It's just not something that he says, you know, um, does not sound like Dr. Fauci. And I looked it up and it certainly uh, is not him. It was actually from a uh, YA author, author um, in Georgia. <clears throat> she tweeted it back in 2017. So I just want to, um, and again, I'm just sharing these things because, um, you know, I agree with all the sentiments here. Like I agree that, you know, you should care about other people. I agree that you should wear masks but these are not factually correct. Um, and that erodes our security, that erodes our message. And we also don't need to use fake news because the actual facts are on our side. Okay, I'm gonna go forward to, I'm gonna skip this next one and go forward to a really big one. This one was really, really tough. Um, this was uh, something that was shared around the Capitol, the riots at the Capitol um, last month. Um, super emotional, has a lot of truth in the sense that, um, you know, the uh, Black Lives Matter protests were approached, were responded to completely differently by police um, versus how the Capitol insurrection was treated. However, um, this, is not police and this is not the Capitol. Um, this is the National Guard and it's the Lincoln Memorial. So, um, you know, I think that like, when I saw this image, I know because I live in DC and also 
Um, I was there um, in uh, Lafayette Park during the BLM protests over the summer. So like, I know that this is all true. The sentiment is right, but the facts behind this exact photo are not described correctly. So, you know, I think that this is just, it, it, it's just really important to um, try and interrogate the things that we have the strongest reactions to. Again, the facts are always on our side. We don't need to share misinformation. Um, and some of the tactics that you have for verifying, you can use Snopes, you can use Google, um, a reverse image search, which um, uh, Ariana went over in our social media training yesterday. Um, but if you just Google reverse image search, you'll be able to um, read about how to do it. Um, you know, and just ask yourself some really honest questions like, why am I feeling this way? Not why am I feeling this way, but like, do I have any evidence for what I'm about to post? Um, is my reaction clouding my judgment about this particular meme? Um, and, you know, uh, in that case, in the case of, for example, the BLM protests and the outsized, you know, police response, I mean, my reaction was like, yeah, this is, this is totally valid. This is correct. I, I just don't need to use this caption on this photo. Um, so, um, you know, it's still, yeah, as Jilda says, like, it would still have been effective that the, the sentiment and the facts are, are with us. Um, so all you need to do is just um, find uh, find um, a better uh, um, citation. Okay, so we only have four minutes left. Um, and I do just want to, oh, uh, sorry. So to, to wrap up um, what to do about misinformation, um, don't interact with those posts, don't repost them, don't comment on them, et cetera. Don't repeat um, talking points. This is something that Anat was talking about, what we, what, what we fight, we feed. Um, so don't refute talking points that you don't want to promote, even if you're trying to refute them. Um, in other words, you know, like, don't say like, voter fraud doesn't exist, you know. No, instead of framing our argument that way, we just say the results of the election were fair and fair, et cetera. Um, share verified photos, credible news sources, cite your data sources when possible. Um, if, if the citations are gonna be too long, you can always just add them in a comment um, as opposed to in the actual caption of the post. Um, and you know, if you don't know, just don't post. Um, it's as simple as that. Um, but um, yeah, the facts are on our side, so you don't ever need to use misinformation. Um, all right, again, our, uh, many of our resources are um, available on the website. The monthly talking points memo, um, which is at the resource library. Um, you can email Ariana for the social squad or maybe she will post a link to that in the chat again. Um, you can sign up for it and she will email you directly with some suggested um, social messaging. Our blog, of course, sisterisrick.com slash blog is another great resource. And, um, <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been talking nonstop. And um, anything that we post on our website, you are more than welcome to use. That is what it is there for. We encourage you to use it. Um, you can contact your organizing staffer, which would be Leif, Neil, or Taylor. Um, and you can also find a lot more um, images and so forth on our asset library, assets.sisterstrike.com. Um, so I will just i am afraid that i only have about a minute and a half left um i'm going to just answer one question do i think that backsliding is a danger like what happened under obama or do, do i think that eyes have been opened to the issue of state legislatures um i think that eyes have absolutely been opened unfortunately it is you know, an uphill battle. I think we have seen that already. Um, but, you know, as I said, movements take time. Um, our work takes time. What we have learned over the last four years is that it's going to take longer than four years. And um, that's totally fine. You know, we're, um, we're not doing this work because it's easy. We're doing it because it is important um, and it, because it, it, it matters and because that it is something that will require um, our investment and our commitment over time in order to achieve. So um, I am going to leave it there. I'm so sorry. I know that you all have a lot of amazing questions, um, but I do wanna make sure that we head to our plenary panel on um, uh, what's at stake in Virginia, uh, which will be really exciting. We have some awesome panelists 
and um, please email me and uh, we'll, we'll get you um, as, as many more resources and answer all your questions as possible. Um, and with that, I am going to hand it over to Gabby.